everybody, good afternoon. Um, thank you, Priscilla, for welcoming me. <laughs> David Adekunle is a young man who joined Andela as a security guard. During, he is the embodiment of the Andela motto that states that talent is equally distributed, but opportunity is not. He joined Andela as a security guard. He used the opportunity that was in front of him. He used the time to train, and eventually he was actually invited as to become a software engineer at Andela. I'm here to talk to you about the fact that technology can't solve poverty, but innovation and incubation can. Poverty is, the wor is a word that the average human prefers not to associate with, but it's a reality that we face in our everyday lives. In 2015, the United Nations estimated that approximately 730 million people are living below the poverty line. In 2019, that number went down to 630 million, approximately 630 million. That's 11% of the global population, and that's just scratching the surface. In Nigeria, the United Nations Bureau, the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics estimated that approximately 83 million people are living below the poverty line of $380 annually, a whopping 41% of the entire population, a combination of Switzerland, Australia, and Canada combined. This indicates that at least one person in this room knows someone living below the poverty line. That person could be your driver, it could be the lady who owns a supermarket down the street from you, it could be your kids, teachers, it could be anybody. Poverty invariably is rooted in our economy and it's something that we see in our day-to-day -day lives. If you're wondering what poverty, if you're wondering, poverty does not only refer to the lack of income and resources. The United Nations also identified poverty as, and, uh, poverty as discrimination, lack of access to decision making, lack of access to infrastructure. Poverty is the lack of access to resources. If you cannot afford basic education, healthcare, internet, you may very well be living below the poverty line. We can confidently state that eradicating poverty is unrealistic, but the question we ask ourselves, that we need to ask ourselves, is how can we curb it? Let's start with the elephants in the room, technology and innovation. What is technology and how does it differ from innovation? According to scholars, Preetz, Katz, and Schutz, in their book, The Relationship Between Innovation and Technology Strategy, this states that poverty plays a significant role in innovation. It acts as a driver for innovation, which is usually introduced as a form of technology. As fundamental as the term technology is, there is no generally accepted or defined or recognized definition of what it is. Scholars have attempted to define it, but they haven't really been successful. Invariably, technology can be understood as the knowledge used to create resources that improve the well-being of humanity. While innovation is the change that creates and adds value. Innovation is the knowledge that spurs creativity and increases the satisfaction of human lives. The United Kingdom Department of Trade and Industry defines it as a successful exploitation of new ideas. Although innovation comes in the form of technology, both co concepts differ. Innovation deals in new products, new production methods, new ideas, new markets. Technology induces innovation, but technology itself cannot produce innovation. Innovation may appear intangible, but the focus here is that innovation is human-driven, is human-centered, Innovation drives the economy. Innovation leads to the creation of jobs. Innovation increases welfare of the people, while technology in itself has the possibility to impede it. So let's ask ourselves, how does technology impede welfare indirectly doing nothing to curb poverty? A report by the UN Conference on Trade Developments this year revealed that technology cannot be a standalone solution to solve poverty. It can affect, it can affect areas like 
the social and political sectors of the economy, but it cannot alone solve poverty for the entire country. By the evidence in this report, technology must be utilized effectively to stop unintended side effects of employment. And since most unemployed people have the capital, do not have the capital to start their own businesses, these, this leads to situational poverty. Take Nigeria, for example. The, in the banking sector, ATMs, mobile banking, internet banking has popped up over the past couple of years, which in turn has reduced the need for human interaction. Automation has rendered ni many Nigerian farmers jobless, even though the existence of automation itself inc increases productivity. Once again, it is clear that all technology does is grow productivity to the benefit of business owners as opposed to the welfare of employees. This makes it unideal for poverty alleviation. Let's move this discussion to, uh, to incubation and innovation and how both can alleviate poverty. In the time I've spent working as director of programs at the Bulb Africa, a tech company de dedicated to innovation and incubation, I have seen individuals pick themselves up, upskill themselves, and grow sustainable businesses. I have seen startups with fresh ideas disrupt the markets, create jobs, and empower other startups to solve problems. In 2020, slightly before the pandemic, Pixu Technologies emerged as a premier photography platform that combines powerful AI technologies and world-class photographers to create timeless memories for customers. In a nutshell, Pixu connects photographers to the services that they need, connects those who need their photographers to those who need their services. In two years, Pixu has not only created job opportunities for these photographers, they have created other ways by which the photographers can rent equipment and grow their businesses. This startup has benefited from a platform that picks individuals and businesses with tech ideas and incubates them to sustainable businesses. This is what incubation does. It stimulates innovation and wealth building. This proves that incubation is activated whenever innovation is created. With, this type, with, with these type of innovations lie the salvation to solving poverty, and the methods are staring right back at us. First, think about worldwide improvements in the ease of adopting innovation as we have come to understand it. Organizations and country leaders can incorporate specific models that engage creativity to make incremental innovation possible. I mean, of course, the ease of adoption relies heavily on the rigidity of the government's policies and organizational commitments. If governments and organizations can frequently adopt current operational systems to their models, innovation itself will be generated by private individual or virtually everyone. Think about it. Imagine if world leaders and private individuals embrace growth opportunities and embrace growth opportunities, the chances of reducing poverty will be out of this world. Most of the poorest economies in the world are either developing, undeveloped, or underdeveloped. So specific models that present opportunities to advance their economic level should be utilized appropriately and incorporated into their systems to support the alleviation of poverty. Take the world's poverty capital, Nigeria, for instance. Mobile money has become a standard method for financial transactions, but the country itself can still expand its model to incorporate digital transactions and financial education. These expanding models include embracing innovation and promoting incubation, both of which are proven methods of increasing welfare. With individuals in the country, incubation and innovation provide opportunities to start and accelerate businesses and careers. Incubation could be a in the form of training and fellowship program that are gradually becoming popular daily. In a year, a typical fellowship program, such as Fellowship at the Bulb, equips over 100 people with in-demand tech skills to remain relevant experts in the global markets. Imagine if incubation platforms were more accepted and popular than they were. 
we must agree that there is, no, there is so much to explore when it comes to innovation and incubation in countries worldwide. But as earlier stipulated, there, is, there are restrictions in policies that continue to cripple innovation. To alleviate poverty, we must be ready to embrace innovation and incubation across all sectors fully. There should be an elimination of negative bias that implies that one industry is more important than the other. Entities responsible for investing in innovative practices, whether political or organizational, must not be clouded by this negative bias. Political and corporate institutions have, over time, invested in technological innovations instead of considering other sectors like agriculture, education, or even real estates. To place poverty where it belongs, all stones must not be left unturned. Innovation must be accepted at all levels and sectors. Technology should be employed in various fields to alleviate poverty, from, agriculture, from agricultural productivity to the generation of cheap energy and providing clean water. The aim has always been and should always be to improve human lives. However, since the technology itself is created through innovation, it must be adequately engineered through innovative practices to reduce poverty worldwide. You may have already figured out my closing thoughts. The point here isn't to prove that technology is not significant, is not a significant factor in poverty alleviation. It is to emphasize that technology must be adequately harnessed through innovation and incubation to cause the growth humans need. To curb poverty, here are the steps we must take as humans. Read our mindset of all negative bias that one industry is more important than the other. Embrace innovation and incubation across all levels. Be open to growth opportunities that ultimately increase human welfare. And finally, we must educate every citizen on the importance of innovative practices to solve common problems. The elephant in the room is not poverty. And maybe we can create a world so innovative the elephant will become as tiny as an ant that can be crushed. Thank you.